Hey, my name is Gareth, and this is the Devlog Diaries for Cloaked Protocol. Cloaked Protocol is a tactical stealth action isometric style game. This game is heavily inspired by games like Hitman, Splinter Cell, and Metal Gear Solid. If you'd like to learn more, you can have a look at my previous video where I go in depth in starting the new indie game project. The link will be in the description below. In the previous devlog, I spoke about all the basic features of Cloak Protocol. I spoke about setting up a, the core architecture, using Mixamo for placeholder animations, as well as just touching base with integrating my own audio solution instead of using the built-in audio solution that comes with Unity. I also spoke about making a project much cleaner using a block list instead of a huge string of condition checking and if statements. Since the last devlog, I managed to get the inventory up and running fully. It was extremely difficult in terms of thinking about and figuring out how the inventory will be used and how to store information. I'm going to break it down just a little right now. The cornerstone of my inventory system lies with something called scriptable objects. Now if this is your first time hearing about scriptable objects, then I'm going to break it down for you real quickly. The technical explanation goes a little something like this. Scriptable objects is a serializable Unity class that allows you to store large quantities of shared data independent from script instances. Using scriptable objects makes it easier to manage, change, and debug. You can build in a level of flexible communication between the different systems in your game so that it is more manageable to change and adapt them through production as well as reuse components. A more simpler way of looking at it is Scriptable Objects is a Unity class in which you are, you are allowed to store a ton of large quantity of shared data. This data lives outside of the inspector and you can change during runtime or debugging. They will not revert once you stop running the game. They are used for stage tracking like health, stamina, magic, potions, bullets or pretty much anything you want to keep track of. When developing the inventory system, I saw so many drag and drop systems on YouTube as well as many Minecraft equip slot systems. However, they did not match my needs. I needed to create a system that would work both on PC and console. On PC, I want the player to be able to use a mouse to select the items. So I did what majority of the developers are doing these days. I went over to ChatGPT and I started asking it how to build an inventory system. Although it did not write the entire system for me, it ended up sparking ideas on how to go about writing the entire inventory system along with the equip system. Next, we will chat about the inventory manager class, but to understand how the inventory manager works, I need to explain a bit of the UI. The UI is split into two parts, utility on the left and tactical on the right. The equip slots are also split up into utility equip slot left and tactical equip slot right. I created a new UI button and modified the background. I added the text and I added an empty icon uh, and saved the button as an inventory slot prefab. This is the prefab that gets added to the left or the right of the inventory when an item is picked up based on the type of item it is. Let's break down the inventory equip system. For starters, I needed to create a few items to pick up, so I created a new scriptable object class and called it item. I used the newly created class to start defining what makes up the item in my game. I added fields like the item name, description, and the icon of the item. I also added a tag to check the type of item it is and a boolean to see if the item is stackable. The item tag variable would check if the item is a utility, consumable, tactical, or throwable item. This will be important later. I then went on to creating a scriptable object class per type of item that inherits from the main scriptable object class called item. Now I could define a weapon scriptable object, a throwable scriptable object, consumable, and so on. Now that the scriptable object classes are out of the way, can now go on to creating the actual items and defining its properties in the inspector. After defining a few items to collect like health, weapons and a pair of binoculars, I ended up creating an inventory manager class. 
each item prefab will have a script called item data. You will then assign a unique scriptable object to the prefab item that will be picked up in the world. In the inventory manager class, you will have a dictionary. How a dictionary works is, you need a key and a value. The key will refer to the value. In my case, the key is a scriptable object. I attach to the item, the player will collect, and the value is the newly instantiated copy of the inventory slot with all the data about the item populating the inventory slot. This is really cool as now the player will collect an item and the game will then keep a reference of the item in the inventory manager. This will also keep a reference to the actual item slot so that we can use the item, update the amount held and equip or unequip an item later. Should the item count drop below one, so zero essentially, then the inventory manager will remove the item from the inventory and delete the item slot. It's actually really cool. Let's move on to equipping and the unequipping of items. Remember that dictionary in the inventory manager class we used to store the item when the player runs over the item? Well, it's time to use it now. Upon picking up an item, three things happen. One, the item in the world is deleted. Two, a copy of the inventory slot is instantiated and added to the inventory screen. Three, a script is added to the actual slot as a component that holds the information about the item that was picked up. And four, the scriptable object that was attached to the game object was passed onto the new script that was just attached to the item slot. Now I can do cool things with the item slot. The script I just attached to it allows me to do a bunch of actions. Upon clicking on the item, I can check if it's stackable. If yes, I can decrement the item. A great example would be as follows. You're allowed four health packs. If you use one, you then remove one from the stack. Or, if the player runs over to pick up a health pack, update the stack with one. With that said, the inventory system is fully functional and all I have to do now is update the UI if the health is used or apply damage if a gun is shot. Please let me know in the comments below if you would like a tutorial on scriptable objects. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date with the next devlog or tutorials. I'm at a point where I have all the core components together to make the vertical slice. For the upcoming weeks, I will be focusing on health UI and damage systems for the game. And I want to start getting a level together to showcase how everything will play in the game. And that is it for this dev vlog for now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.